pretty you can see she is a beautiful day out here in uh, Twin Falls Idaho we're just outside of Twin Falls but beautiful blue 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 no that's not a skip in your video sky so we're just sitting here enjoying a second cup of cafe au lait a little hot we just made it all through some of the emails and whatnot we did some uh, video gaming there earlier we're doing up some videos for that get that ready they're gonna be a week behind also and I've decided I'm not gonna do them on the trucking channel just because they're not trucking um, I'm gonna do them on my other channel which the link is down below that's uh, JWO 1027 I know that was my original YouTube channel that I used for watching videos and then I just started posting a few on there and so anyways it's a uh, it's just a me channel it's whatever nonsense I decide to put up there that's not related to trucking or whatever you know just other stuff so yep we're sitting here and uh, uh cute doggy I can't even show you now because I'm out of the camera but well, he's way over the heck over there so I saw one guy in here he was in the shop yesterday and I don't his truck has moved so I'm not sure where they sent him, if they sent him to the dealer or whatever. He had some major problems. The guy had three dogs. Now, okay, grant you they were little wiener dogs. They are little ones. It was a mother and a father doggy, and they had a little puppy there, too. And it's like, okay, that's too much for in a truck, guys. I understand having a dog with you. Now, here's the other point, too. Some of you guys are bringing humongous freaking dogs with you. Holy crow! I've seen some huge dogs get out of these trucks. And uh, so, uh, you know, medium to small dog is okay in a truck. I mean, it is a small space, so it's unfair to the animal to coop them up in such a small space if it's a big, huge dog. So, anywho, uh, yeah, we're sitting here enjoying coffee and doing emails. Yes, that's what we're doing because there's no load yet. So, we're waiting for a load. Alrighty, so I want to just read out uh, Crystal. I don't know how to pronounce her last name properly. Geiger, Geiger, Googer. No, it's not Googer. Geiger. It's got to be Geiger. It's, I'm sure maybe that one of the G's is silent or something. I don't know exactly. So I, pro, I I really apologize, Crystal, for butchering your name if I did. So, okay. But then she signed it at the bottom. Crystal, and I hope she doesn't mind me reading this out because I thought this was really good. She did a poem. She wrote a poem. And she says, a poem I wrote. But then she signed it, Crystal, but then a different last name. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that one either. So, okay. So, but I just thought I'd read it on 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 the, on, on the air here, on the video, because I thought it was really good. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna send her a message and see if she minds if I post it on the website also. But it starts off, truck driver's prayer. Lord bless this rig along. Oops. So let me start over again because I already misread it. Truck driver's prayer. Lord bless this rig long and tall, and protect the cargo that I haul. Watch over me day and night, guide me to my destination sites. Keep me safe while I travel alone and pray to God that I make it home. Signed, Crystal Val... Uh, sorry, Crystal. I just... I can't. It's, I'm going to butcher it and no. So I'm just going to say Crystal. Crystal V is how she signed it, but it's Crystal G. So, Crystal, you really got to explain that one to me. Uh, maybe it was that it was married name or something. I don't know. Okay, so, anyways, Crystal, I hope you don't mind. Uh, so, I, I thought that was a really good poem, and hopefully with your permission, I'll be putting that on the website as a little side uh, column item. I thought it was very good. Thank you very much, Crystal. Or I should say, thank you very much, Crystal, for posting that on Facebook, on the BRT page. All right, so I just want to throw this one in here in... And I don't want to, I'm not making fun of you, Morris. I mean, obviously, Morris, he's on, been on the page for a while. But he's asking, Jerry, can you tell me what would happen? And I've been asked this question before a couple of times. So I'm going to try to explain this as best I can and as quick as I can because it's really a simple... Oh, and we got messages coming in, maybe? Maybe we got a load? Do we got a load? We got a load? Maybe. Is that possible? Is it possible? I don't hear another beep, though. What's it say? Oh, load assignment. I'm um, liking this. And it's here in Idaho. I'll get to Morris's question in a minute. We're looking at this here. Uh, picking up. When's it pick up? 
What's today? What's the date? Oh, today's the 18th. Picks up tomorrow. It's at 1 o'clock. Where the heck is Shelly Idle? Let's just scroll down and see how many empty miles it is. Oops, went too far. Well, it's only 135 miles away, so two hours, two and a half hours. So that's cool. We get to relax today. Bonus! Not that I really want to, but what the hell? Hey, it's got good miles, too. Hey, we're going back down to Laredo. Yes, sir. Is there a load going to Mexico? Okay, baby. I don't know why they're having a hard time sending me the rest of the load info, but... Yo, bird uppers! We're liking that. Okay, so let's get to the finishing this off. Well, guys, we'll, we'll go back there in a minute. Okay, okay. So, Mars. Sorry, Mars. We got sidelined because we got a good load of stuff. We had to pay attention to the, the beep. Okay? The beep, you know, always sometimes takes precedence, depending on my mood. Okay, can you tell me what would happen if you go over on the electronic log to get somewhere? I try not to push, but I do to get out of certain places. But that is paper logs. And this is true. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. If you go over your hours on paper logs and you fudge your logs, and everyone does it, pretty much a little bit here, five minutes there, whatever. It's very minimal and it's easy to do and blah, 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 paper logs. Yes, you can get away with it. However, if you get caught and you don't pay attention to how you're doing it, you're going to get a fine. The difference is on e-logs, okay, you get caught unless you have a good excuse. Now, we'll get to the excuse part in a minute. Okay, we'll put the phone down so I'm not pointing it at you. Okay. So, if the thing with electronic logs, you go over your hours, boom. And it's not a fine, but it's a violation immediately. Okay? It is a violation. And we're going to get more beeps now. So, be prepared for several beeps in the video. So, and it's a violation through your company, and then they'll give you warnings, blah, 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 which is what they're supposed to do. Let's just turn down the volume here. So we don't hear loud beeps all the time. Okay? And I'm not going to get too much into detail on that one. Um, now, here's the thing. Like I had happened to me this winter where I left and I had lots of time to get to where I wanted to get to, which was just on the other side of Toronto, uh, Bowmanville. Normally, it's an hour and a half uh, drive uh, from where once I reached Milton. And I still had three and a half hours left in my thing once I got past Milton. It was in a snowstorm. Traffic at that point was still moving good. Get into Toronto, boom, different story. Bumper to bumper crawl all the way through him. And basically, by the time I got to Pickering, I was at four and a half hours. Okay? Uh, it took me to go from Milton, basically, to Pickering. And so I was basically over by an hour. Now, I got off at Pickering, and uh, there's a little uh, Petrocan uh, truck stop there. And that's where I went to because that was the first thing that I could get to. Because once you pass Dixie Road, Toronto, anyone who knows Toronto, once you pass Dixie Road, there's nothing and uh, until Pickering. So, and that's where I got off and went to. So, I basically went to the nearest, safest place to stop, but I was over by an hour. Now, I didn't get, uh, yes, I was uh, got a violation, but it's a minor violation. Okay? I wasn't over on my daytime driving hours like my 14, or my, uh, about 13 in Canada, but I was over on my 70 hours. Even though I was working off recap each day, I ended up going over my 70 by an hour. Anyways, it wasn't a big, big deal. Uh, that I had a very, a, a good excuse to do, uh, you know, because of the snowstorm. Now, if I had driven into the city knowing I only had an hour and 45 minutes to do an hour and 30 minute drive and there was a heavy snowstorm and I had an opportunity to stop ahead of time knowing that there's a heavy snowstorm, I'm going into a city, there's more than likely going to be traffic, you know, hour and a half is a driving distance time on a good day, a normal day. Uh, then yes, that's, I mean, I could get away with it probably, but it's a, a heavier violation as far as the company goes. Because, you know what, I'm supposed to know this stuff. It's about planning, okay? So, you don't plan to drive your day to 10 hours and 58 minutes and then go, oh crap, I can't make it to that truck stop because, you know, I'm going to go over now because I'm still an hour away from it because of traffic. And say, oh, well, traffic held me up, so, you know, I'm just going to drive over. 
It's not acceptable. You don't plan your day at 10 hours and 58 minutes, okay? Plan your day for around 10 hours driving. That gives you an hour of cushion, okay? That's a good rule of thumb to do, okay, guys? So, anyways, Morris, I hope that answered your question. You, you, you do get a violation if you go over, um, but your the only exceptions to the rule that they allow you up to two hours uh, is weather. If all of a sudden you get caught in really bad weather, if you drive into the weather knowing ahead of time, then, you know, that's not really advisable. But if you get caught, also, if for whatever reason there's an accident, the road is closed and you're stuck on the highway, you know, you will be allowed there to get off the highway and get to the nearest safest place, uh, like I said. So, th there are a few exceptions that they allow you to get away with, but basically it's not like log books where you just psh, backtrack it or whatever and no one's the wiser, right? So, anyway, you can do that on e-logs. They, someone's going to know about it.